Answers to the Ford Joachim of Rashi will now be addressed by first responding to the textual problem, namely the need for Moshe to raise the speech impediment issue a second time in Perek Vav, in light of the fact that he had previously agreed to the solution that Aharon would be his spokesperson to both Bnei Yisrael and to Paro. The Rebbe does accept the thesis of the Gur Aryeh that a distinction can be made between Perek Dalet and Perek Vav, but not for the reasons provided by the Maharal. What the Rebbe does is to take a close look at the two terms used by Moshe with reference to his speech impediment in Perek Dalet, Moshe uses the term Kvad Pe or Kvad Lashon, whereas in Perek Vav, Moshe's problem is that he is an Aral Svatayim. Let me digress for a moment away from the Sikha text to see how this distinction is handled by the present day translations. Firstly, the Hirsch translation. For Kvad Pe or Kvad Lashon Anochi, he writes. I am heavy of speech and heavy of tongue. Aral Svataim is rendered as unpliant lips. Hirsch does not offer any commentary to the change in terminology from Perek Dalad to Perek Vav, which, which suggests that in both cases, Moshe is making the same point, that he has a form of a speech impediment. In Perek 4, it was the mouth and tongue. Perek 6, it was the lips. The Art Scroll Rashi series renders the Perek Dalad Kvad Perek Kvad Lashon as heavy of mouth and heavy of speech, and Aral Svatayim as blocked lips. This in line with uh, Rashi's commentary, soon to be discussed. The Living Torah from Arya Kaplan has an interesting take on these two terms. For the first, Kvad Per or Kvad Lashon Anochi, I find it difficult to speak and find the right language. Aral Svatayim, I have no self-confidence when I speak in which he seems to distinguish between Perek Dalad, the physical impediment, and in Perek Vav, it's much more of a psychological issue that Moshe is raising. And with that digression, we shall return back to the Sikha and see how Rashi handles the change in terminology between Perek Dalad and Perek Vav. The very first time we hear of the fact that Moshe had a speech impediment is in Perek 4. We are not told whether this was a birth defect, a psychological issue, and it is left to the Medrash to fill in the details as to how Moshe came to be a Kavad Peh or Kavad Lashon. The source of Moshe's speech impediment notwithstanding, we will need to address the change in terminology used by the text where we find in Perek 4 it was Kvad Pe or Kvad Lashon, and then in Perek 6 it becomes an Aral Svatayim. True, both terms imply a speech impediment, but as we shall shortly demonstrate, the Aral Svatayim impediment was far more serious than the Kvad Pe. Rashi's interpretation for Kvad Pe is that Bechveidut Ani Medaber, Chav Dalad heaviness, laboriously, with difficulty, and Rashi quotes a French equivalent, understood to suggest a form of stuttering. The definition for Aral Svatayim, according to Rashi, is Atum Svatayim, a blockage of the lips. In other words, the lips block the speech patterns to the point that at best you may have some muffled sounds. Rashi then proceeds to provide six examples where the Ayin Resh Lamad Sharesh, Aral, is understood to mean Atum, blocked. Suffice to say, though, from the Rashi, it appears that the Aral Svatayim was a far more severe form of speech impediment than the Kvad Pe or Kvad Lashon. In this way, we can now justify why Moshe raised the issue a second time in Perek 6, because for some unexplained reason, the degree of the speech impediment intensified to the point where he had become an Aral Svatayim, and therefore, for the lesser degree of a speech impediment, Moshe could get by by using Aharon as his spokesperson. By the time he was instructed to make a presentation to Paro in Perek Vav, the condition had worsened to the point where he could no longer speak. 
he was an Aral Sfatayim, and for this reason, raises the issue of his suitability to represent HaKadosh Baruch Hu in his dealings with Parah.